Mike Green, I'm here in Sacramento for Real Vision. I'm really excited to sit down with John Morlock. John, you're the California State Senator representing the 37th District of California, which Huntington Beach, the Orange County, Costa Mesa area. Wanted to briefly dig back into your background, though, because you didn't start in public service. You actually started as a certified financial planner, right? A for CPA, sure. actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, certified public accountant. That was a, an accounting major. Yep. And uh, was uh, with the firm uh, for a number of years, actually 10 years as a partner, and also uh, acquired my certified financial planner license and didn't sell product, but just to help my clients with their other professionals to make sure that they were focused on a, an estate plan. And then you were recruited to run for state treasurer, is that correct? That's correct. I, I had moved into a home, a larger home in Costa Mesa, and my neighbors across the street were involved in the local Republican club, and I still had my Reagan Bush bumper sticker on the back of the car. And so I kind of got recruited and over time I was involved with their club and they said run for central committee and I did and got elected and then the chairman of the central committee one night said, why don't you run for treasurer? And I said, no, I, I'm treasurer of enough boards. I am, and, and he said, no, 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 we're talking Robert L. Bob Citron, Orange County treasurer tax collector. And I didn't react well to that either. So I had to kind of take some time, uh, <laughs> found myself backpacking out of Tuolumne Meadows, uh, Young Lakes, and on the way home on the 395, a good friend of mine who's now here in Sacramento as well, he's the CEO of the, of the fairgrounds, uh, the state fair, he said, John, you've been complaining about this idea, why don't you just look at it and you know, make a decision, you'd be, you'd be home every night if you got elected, and then you could work with the supervisors and help them out, you'd have the king's ear. And so I said, okay, Rick, I'll, I'll do some research, and then when I, saw the portfolio that was being managed. I was able to get a copy. I was rather astounded that there was so much leverage being utilized. Uh, I would never put a widow or an orphan you know, in a, in, a, in a portfolio like this. Why are all the taxpayers of Orange County involved? And so that sort of triggered me to, to run. And so you and I know this situation very well, right? In 1994, Bob Citron, who was the, the treasurer um, for the county of Orange County, had invested his, his um, assets, the cash that he had on hand, effectively into an interest rate swap that offered a slightly higher return than money markets at that time. We experienced a significant decline in interest rates from roughly 9% in 1990 to about 45 if I remember correctly, maybe 5% in 1994. And Citron effectively placed a very large levered bet that interest rates were not going to move higher in order to get a little bit extra yield on the cash. Is that correct? It was an arbitrage play. He would yep. borrow at the short end of the yield curve, pay maybe 3%, buy at the four-year level, which was paying about 5%. So you make the 200 basis point spread. And that's all great if the short end of the yield curve cooperates. And he anticipated that it would even decline. But in fact, Alan Greenspan said, I think inflation is starting to raise its head. We ought to do something about that. We ought to raise rates. And so during the year he did, and, and it coincided with my campaign saying, look, he's raising rates. You're losing value. You took $7 billion in assets based on what the county had and what 187 other municipalities decided to, to chip in. And you, you levered it up to 21 billion. You know, it's just amazing. And if those short end rates go up, then you're in trouble. He had collateral calls, but I only, only had beat reporters following the whole thing. So, like I said, it was sort of like the, if I said in a you know, conversation we had earlier, uh, that it was like the big short. You know, you're trying to explain to everybody what, what's going to happen, what, what could, you know, could be a massive implosion, and they're all looking at you like, oh, you're just a gadfly. You're just a kid. Well, you, you mentioned the big short, and this really was. I mean, this was kind of the original big short. We actually created a situation in which derivatives blew up a significant financial entity and caused widespread distress across Wall Street. It wasn't just that, that um, Greenspan had, it, had raised interest rates. We actually saw the financial consequences of Orange County being unable to meet its financial obligations, right? Right, and they were inverse floaters, a derivative, kind yep. of unique. And when rates would go down, the yields would go up, inverse, uh, and plus the leverage. And then once, once Greenspan decided to start, you know, not being aware of what Citron was doing, but just doing what he had to do for the, for the economy, then you know, most people in the carry trade would have disengaged. They would have started paying off the lenders and, and getting out, but, but Citron basically doubled down. So when you brought this up, you were widely dismissed and you were actually, uh, in a conversation we had earlier, you mentioned that reporters would call you up and say, is there anyone that you have 
um, that is of a similar caliber, caliber to S&P, for example, to comment on your, in support of your side of the story? Or are you just being political in, in this analysis? Yeah, it was tough. I mean, I was like staying awake at night, looking at the ceiling, saying, okay, God, what, what kind of mess is this where no one can understand how this works? And why don't they do the heavy lifting? Why doesn't a reporter figure it out? Or at least hire someone you know, to figure it out. But Standard & Poor's said, you know, the leverage didn't cause them any concern. Moody's was in the same place. And it was a real, real awkward kind of deal. So when everything went and hit Silly Hill, right? Uh, everybody's going, oh, oh, is that what he was talking about? You know, and it's like, ah. Uh. Now you ultimately lost that election. Right, right, right before 40, it blew up. We had 40%, a little under 40% of the vote. So yeah. I didn't do too bad for someone who came out of nowhere against the long-term incumbent. And then you ultimately trans transferred into the public sector following this. And so you've spent the better part of 25 years here now representing the state of California in one form or another. Is right. that, that's fair. You have done a couple of things I think that are pretty unique. I mean, one, we had a conversation earlier. You used to host a podcast. Hopefully you're going to come back and do that again. Um, and you run a blog that is very transparent in terms of what you're working on, what's being done on the Hill, et cetera. 